Welcome, welcome. We're ready to get started. My name is Holly Dorniak, and I'm an instructional technology specialist for Lamar Consolidated ISD, the best little district in all of Texas. And this is my cohort in crime. I am Jessica Dyer, and I just want to say welcome. If you're not from Texas, then welcome, y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, we're instructional technologists, so we help support our teachers and help them learn how to use their iPads and the technology that we have in our district. We are very fortunate to work in a district that really does support technology. So um, if you're here to learn about how to use your iPad with your kiddos in a higher level thinking skills way, then you're in the right place. We're both uh, recovering elementary teachers. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're going to have to forgive us. And we have um, lots of elementary examples, lots of secondary examples as well. But um, we both kind of lean elementary. So, so you secondary folks are going to have to uh, extrapolate sometimes a little bit. And likewise for the elementary. And you may have to use a dictionary, because I don't know what extrapolate means. And that <laughs> is OK. All right. So if you have a smart device and you want to scan this QR code, this will take you to our team blog, and it has all of our resources for this presentation. We have lesson plan ideas for you, and it's the link to the actual presentation itself. We'll give you a moment. As you're doing this, I just want to remind you, especially if you are secondary folks, um, don't forget to let your students do this as well. When uh, you're trying, you're giving all kinds of information or whatever, it's okay for them to take a picture so that they can refer to your notes or whatever again later. That's not even part of the presentation. That's just extra. It's just a bonus. <laughs> Probably, I would say, because there's so many people trying to access the wireless. You might want to take a picture and uh, scan it later or just um, use the uh, URL later. And we can always bring back this yeah, at the end. Yeah, we'll, we can pop this back up at the end. So while you are scanning, I'm going to go ahead and start. So I want you to think, I see tons of iPads out there. I know a lot of teachers have access to iPads in their classroom currently, and if you're one of those teachers, I just want you to think about how you use it with your students in centers and small group. Think about the level of Bloom's taxonomy that they're using, those favorite apps that you put them on. Do you think it's higher level? Crickets, crickets. No, it's, uh, it's really lower level taxonomy. Lots of times we're at the remembering and understanding level. So we're kind of just stuck in flashcard mode. Our goal is to start using the iPad, using several apps to combine them and to start creating, evaluating, really thinking about what they're doing. That is our goal. And we want to remind you that um, the learning is not about the device. Um, you can learn, it will, regardless of what device you have. I mean, yes, we have a lot of iPads in classrooms. But regardless if it's an Android device that the student brought to school or whatever it may be, um, we want them higher level thinking you know, and, and creating things, regardless of whether they're using a netbook from Dell or an iPad from Apple. That's irregardless. Sure. So we have some essential skills with the iPad um, that all, all teachers should know. Um, but even if you don't, don't be um, alarmed or afraid or whatever. Our kids are so willing to teach us. Um, nothing makes them feel better than when they are the teacher. Um, so if you at any time, regardless of whether it's an app or um, whatever device it is, if you're just not comfortable with the technology, make sure you're allowing your students um, to give back to you. That's an important skill that they have. The essential skills that you're going to want to make sure your um, students know. First is um, being able to do a spotlight search. Um, and I would explicitly teach these at the beginning of the year or at the beginning of um, 
whatever unit that you're, you're in so that the students know for the whole rest of the year all of these skills and you can refer back to them time and time and time again. Um, spotlight search, if you're not familiar, basically you push your home button and you swipe backwards until you get that little search box. The, the great thing about teaching spotlight search is um, in our district, maybe in your district or your school system, you have tons and tons of iPads, every kid has one, that's great. We don't have that in our school district. So we're sharing iPads all over the place. You know, sometimes I have a classroom of five of them or, and, and then I loan mine out to someone else. So with, with all of that movement of the iPads, it's really hard to organize the apps and keep them organized so that students can find them, uh, find them when you need them. So with Spotlight Search, you don't have to worry as much about um, keeping things right in the right folder and all my photo apps together or whatnot. Um, so they swipe backwards, they do a quick search, even kindergartners on up um, can do a Spotlight Search once, you, um, once they have a little training. So that's a very important skill. The next important skill um, is adding images to the camera roll. Now, of course, everyone thinks of, well, just use the camera. But there's two other ways to add images to the camera roll. The first is to um, take a screenshot. So that's an important skill um, to practice with your uh, students. And if you don't know, it's just your home button and the power button. At the same time, when you let go, it flashes, and that's your screenshot. Okay, and then the, the last way is from the internet. And once you're on the internet, um, and um, usually when we do this with a few um, less people, we go through how to do an advanced search and make sure that the image is copyright friendly. Um, and that's an important skill as well for your kids to know. Um, I like to do Google search, and I click on the little gear up at the top and go to advanced search. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, you can select uh, images that are free to use or share. Um, so along with all of these other skills that you're um, helping your, your children with or your students with, you should be um, teaching them how to be great digital citizens um, uh, so that they have those skills for the future because they're not learning them at home. They might spend, you know, forever on Facebook and forever on Twitter or whatever, but they may not be, you know, sensitive to copyright uh, issues. So those are both um, good things to know. Taking video. Um, most of your kids are going to know, you know, they're going to come in, they know how to take a video, but um, my pet peeve is looking at a video that is tall and skinny. <laughs> Um, for your video to fit the screen, uh, it, you need to do it horizontally. So you need to hold your device horizontally. Um, why they put the camera on the one side of the iPad and the iPhone, I don't know. Um, it's counterintuitive. But teaching your kids to hold the iPad or the iPhone, whatever you have, um, horizontally so that it, your way. video fills the screen. Not this way. Uh -huh, uh, it's an important skill. Then finally, the action button. The action button is seen throughout, tons and tons and t almost every single app has the action button somewhere. And basically what the action button means is that you're pushing, um, you're sending the um, information, whatever it is, the product that you created, you're sharing it via email or you're putting it into Dropbox, you're moving it in, in some way, shape or form. So students need to know what that little button looks like, it's like a little box with an arrow out of it. And they need to know the name so that you don't constantly go, Click on the little box with the arrow coming out of it. Now, that's a, a really good skill for your kids to have. And then turning in assignments. It's all well and great to make a really awesome product um, on your device, but if you can't turn it in anywhere, or if it's a hassle to um, turn it in, then you're not going to be apt to uh, do that. Um, I'm really echoing, it's making me a little crazy, sorry. Um, you're not apt to do that uh, process again. So the first way um, to get uh, the assignment off of the iPad is your dongle, which is a really fun name for, it just is that white, uh, white cord that comes with your iPad. And if you plug that into any PC or Mac, essentially what you've done is turn your iPad into a flash drive. And if you think of it that way um, as um, a flash drive, then it's really simple to pull the images and videos off. But what if you want to pull something like a keynote off? You can do that easily in iTunes, um, but there's a couple other easier ways to do it as well. The first is email. Um, if Whether you have a device set up um, or an email address set up on the iPad itself, maybe like for me, Mrs. Dorniak at lcisd.org or whatever, I've got a fake you know, email address, Mrs. Dorniak at Gmail. And I sign in to all of my iPads. And again, elementary, you can, you can get away with that. Secondary, they're going to have to use their own email addresses. 
Um, but if I sign in on all devices, then when I ask my students to turn in their work, they can just send me a quick email. Okay? That's pretty simple. And cloud storage. Using Dropbox, um, SkyDrive, um, help me out. Yeah. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> Dropbox, SkyDrive, uh, um, oh, oh, Evernote and Skitch are go. also great ways um, to utilize cloud storage so that all of the devices are syncing to a single account. Or um, if you have secondary students, the um, students are logging in and then pushing out their information to you via SkyDrive, Dropbox, etc. And if you aren't sure, because that is a lot of cloud storage ideas, my favorite, I think Holly's favorite, uh -huh. is Dropbox. Dropbox. So if you're not using that, great. that's the one that just lends itself most easily to um, these devices. You, you can create a shared folder, or kids can turn into a shared folder, things like that. That makes it nice. Then finally, Edmodo. Um, Edmodo is great because there's a whole other layer of um, social interaction that happens with Edmodo. But you are able to turn in um, um, projects from your camera roll and your um, video roll um, through Edmodo, which is really handy, through the Edmodo app, excuse me. And then last but not least, um, our favorite way to turn things in is an app called Shobi. And basically how Shobi works is um, students, uh, a teacher creates an account, creates a class in Shobi, and you get a code. And it's a short little code. It's like four digits, four or five digits. Um, then you give the students the code um, for your class, and you go ahead and make assignments and folders and whatever. And it's just basically places that the students are going to turn in their work. So they can turn in a keynote assignment, a pages assignment, um, uh, from tons and tons of different apps. You can turn things in there. Then the nice thing is the teacher has all of that organized in one place. They can plug in using a VGA dongle or whatever, an Apple TV if you have it, um, and then show student work um, all, all, you know, one right after the other right after the other instead of handing around flash drives and messing around with oh this format doesn't work here or whatever and if you have a favorite app that you're already using that you're thinking oh you know I think I could I want to use Shobi for that if you go to Shobi.com I believe it's dot com they have a list of all of the apps that that interface works with they're kind of new and up and coming yeah um, if you get nothing else out of this um, presentation today I hope you um, get apps gone free out of it um, we're going to go through a whole ton of different apps. Um, some of them are free, some of them are paid, but um, a free app that everyone needs to have is called Apps Gone Free. What it does, I've had, uh, I've had other app shoppers in the past um, and that gave me, you know, here's 36 or 150 free apps, but they were all junk. You know, they had ads. I don't want to see Viagra anything across anything coming, you know, to my, my little ones. Um, so um, I, I really am really stingy. I would rather have a few great apps rather than 150 meh apps. So Apps Gone Free gives you about, um, or it uh, gives you an alert every day, and there's usually about five to seven apps. Now, they're not geared towards education, but I would say about roughly a third to two thirds I look at and I go, I can use that in the classroom. I can use that in the classroom. I can use that in the classroom. So it's really cool. Um, it, it, and I said, about yeah, that. and so yeah. with that app, you know, apps. Um, Apps, in case you don't know, they're like gas prices. They go up, they go down, and then occasionally they go free. So that's when this, this app's gone free. It's looking to market for you so you don't have to wait and look every day and see, is it free yet? Has it gone right. down yet? Right. So um, a lot of the apps that we're going to show you, I we, wish gas prices yeah, would go free. they might be two ninety nine or one ninety nine now, but we got them for free when yeah. um, we were alerted. Yeah. So y'all ready to look at some apps? The yeah. first one that we're going to talk about is Skitch. Skitch is an app that lets you take a picture. You can take a picture ahead of time, or you can have your students take pictures. And then it lets you annotate or type on top of that picture. So for example, this is a picture. Uh, we were doing a walk around the school. The student, we were looking for fractions. How can we, what different things can we find in your real world to make fractions out of? It's a student that was struggling with the concept. So she noticed that the library windows, she could uh, draw those out into four parts, and then we made the fraction to shade three-fourths. So you can see she shaded in the pink and labeled it there as well. And if you look at the very bottom, she put her name. That's a great thing to remember. That way the teacher can actually use this in the classroom and possibly take a grade if she wanted to. So the black boxes um, is what was actually in the app. That was what was annotated on top. 
Um, here is another picture. This was something that was grabbed, like Holly was talking about, from the um, internet. So she saved it from the internet somewhere into her camera roll. And then they were identifying different land landforms. type landforms. Yeah. So they identified the peninsula, labeled it peninsula. Um, and keep in mind, um, Sketch is something, it, Sketch, Evernote, and Penultimate all work together. If you have one account, and again, you don't have to have an account to use Sketch, but if you do and you have um, your device logged into that account, everything that they save to their um, Sketch uh, role is, is saved on every device. So um, you can, it, it makes a class project a lot easier um, to do when you can see what everybody's doing, what everybody's done, what, what they're finished with, and it makes grading it um, a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So the next set that we're going to look at is uh, sending postcards. Sending postcards, the kids that I've done it with, it's just tons of fun. They, they love doing it. Turbo Collage Light, the purpose behind that is, so for example, in the class, the um, idea was to pull, we were focusing on Martin Luther King. They wanted to pull down as many pictures as they could. And on a postcard, originally, they could just put one picture. But if you use Turbo Collage, you can grab tons of pictures and create a collage with it and then use that as your one picture for the postcard. So here you can see they were able to grab four different images, and that would be one side of the postcard that saved from that app, that app um, saved to their camera roll. And then they were able to go to Postino and on the back side draw a picture and add some um, text down there on their postcard. And what parent doesn't love to see their, their kid's signature? I know, again, we used, we're confessed, we're elementary. So those little biddies, their parents <coughs> love to see their little signatures, very cute. Um, this postcard app will actually mail, physically mail this postcard out if you have the physical address for a fee. I mean, it costs in the app. The other thing that you can do is you can email this to your parents for free. And that brings up a really um, important part of what we're doing today. Um, everything that your students make, if they make it and they turn it into the teacher, that's great. But how exciting is that? Nah. But if they make it and they um, share it with their parents, if they share it with the community, if they share it with um, another class, a class they met on Skype, if you're building a real audience for these products, um, then your motivation level skyrockets. Absolutely. And this is just another example. This is not Postino. This one is, is this Red, Red Stamp. Stamp. Mm -hmm. Red Stamp, um, same idea that was studying Martin Luther King. And they have the picture there. And they were able to um, type in, this is actually a description of what's going on in that photo. So this is research of what they've done. It's a great way to present some research information that they've been studying. So they're taking on the role of someone else, um, a member of history or whatever, and then writing the postcard, sending the postcard to another member of history um, as if they were that person. So there's a lot of good inferencing there. Mm -hmm. All right, go Hollywood. Um, everybody loves to make a movie, but before you make a movie, um, it's important to storyboard. So we have two apps um, featured right here, Sticky Board and Graphio Lite. Both are excellent for storyboarding, and again, um, one tool is not an end-all, be-all tool. Paper and pencil is great. So if you want to have them do um, their storyboarding on paper and pencil, that's A-OK. -okay. Um, but here's two options in case you want to um, keep them on the iPad. Um, sticky board um, is basically sticky notes, and you add text to it, and then you can draw on top of that. Um, all of the sticky notes move. You can... Um, change the color of the sticky notes. So this is probably great for, there's not a lot of bells and whistles, so if you're lower elementary, that's a great idea. If you're upper elementary or secondary, Graphio Lite is wonderful. Um, it allows you to um, create a whole graphic organizer, um, input images, um, it, all of your, um, your writing, like your circle, will turn into a perfect circle after you draw it, so that's really cool. Um, so if you're doing, you know, tree maps or whatever, getting ready for to make your movie, um, this is a great app to use. The reason it's light, it's it does it's free, but it, you are limited to four um, uh, 
graphic organizers. Um, so if you go in and you delete out one or whatever, then you can um, and you know uh, redo and add an additional. Um, the, if you pay for the real thing, then it's unlimited. So if you're using it with a bunch of kids, just know that that might be an issue that you're going to run into if you're choosing to use a free version. And I'm going to chime in and say one more that we did not have listed there, but on Thinking Maps, our, our district is huge on Thinking Maps. I really like Poplet Light. Poplet Light is a really good one if you're organizing Thinking Maps. All right, we have um, the, our next three apps, Sock Puppet, Toontastic, and uh, Puppet Pals HD are kind of, pup, well, I mean, they, they are what they sound like. They're making a puppet show. So we're just going to do a quick demo of Sock Puppet just because it's hilarious. Um, Sock Puppet is great um, because the free version, you're limited to 30 seconds. So initially, as a teacher, I thought, oh, limited to 30 seconds. Truthfully, how long do you want these videos to be? <laughs> you know, it's just going to take you that much longer to grade. So for my money, free is great. Um, if you get the paid version, the, it, you know, it's unlimited um, in the time that you can, uh, you know, do sock And there's puppet. more characters. There's more backgrounds. Right. But yeah. Simple is fine. Additional features. Whoops. So here's sock puppet. We're just going to open it up quickly. So we have two characters, and when we hit record, oh, I think we're in, let me go back home. There we go. So the kids hit new, they create their character, they select their characters, they hit next, choose a background, hit next, choose props if you like, and you're ready to go. So the setup is fast. So if the kids have done their storyboarding, they're pretty much ready to go. If I tap on um, each of the images, you can see that the voice or the mouth will open. Hi, Holly. And then you just tap uh, record at the top. Which way am I? Okay. Hi, Holly. We're presenting at ISTE. This is fun. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then you just hit stop, and it processes for a second. And the brilliant part is the voices. Uh, it was recording that whole time. Hi, Holly. We're presenting at ISTE. This is fun. It's pretty exciting. Um, I'm here to tell you even secondary um, kids love the fact that it makes their voice really high and silly. Um, and you can get a lot of good uh, information out of them when, and, and when if, they're engaged. Like and that. I will throw out there that on this one, the paid version has a really easy way to share out. The, the little share out button's real quick and simple. I want to say e either emails or uploads to YouTube. The other thing is you can change that voice where it makes your voice higher or lower. It gives you lots of different options. Good. Next, we have Toontastic. Um, the thing we love, Toontastic is free. Um, again, you can pay and get additional characters and backdrops, but really the pay, the, I'm sorry, the free version um, is pretty robust. What you will want to do, though, um, they've got like a limited number of backgrounds. It's like pirate, and um, there's, there's, you're, the you're going to want to, the park. You're going to want to kind of take a look at the backgrounds first if you're choosing to use the free version, so that when your kids um, make their puppet show or are writing their puppet show, that they're writing it for the correct setting. Otherwise, things get a little funny, and, and your kids don't enjoy it nearly as much. Um, but what we love about um, Toontastic is it has this fantastic story arc, which is is great for any ELA teacher. Then once you've um, set the scenes, and you can delete out any scenes. You don't have to have six scenes or five scenes. You can just have one or you can have two or three. After you're done creating the scene, it allows you to go in and um, set the mood. And so what it does is it puts in um, background music, and you can kind of amplify the mood. So you could be, you know, it could be surprising, and it could be really surprising or not quite as surprising, or tense. Um, and that's a really great way. I, I'm, like I said, recovering ELA um, le uh, elementary teacher. And teaching tone sometimes is a really difficult thing. So this is a great way to teach tone to your kids. Then our final puppet uh, show app is uh, Puppet Pals. And Puppet Pals, the, paid, the, the free version is great. The paid version, um, it's one of my, um, if I had 
only $20 or so to spend on apps, I would definitely get the director's um, cut of the, this version. What the paid version allows you to do is cut, take a picture and cut out um, your kid if you want and use them as the puppet, which is really fun. And then they can add their own background. So you can see in our example here, um, the kid drew their own background and um, we took a picture of it and then they added themselves in. So here's their example. Whoa, what was that explosion? I better go check it out. Oh my gosh, it's a fire! I gotta go out with this bucket. I feel really good about myself. This was an excellent hike. Yay! I like how he took pictures of Yeah, he took lots of different pictures, too. one this way, one this way. And, and you want to tell them when they're recording, make sure you record loudly. You know, he was talking kind of quiet. Quiet, yeah. Um, and then finally, um, for making movies, um, and, and for all apps, don't think of, I think as um, PC and even Mac users, we have a tendency to think, I have to create everything in this one piece of software, in this one app or whatever, and you don't. Um, so it's really easy, after you've saved, you know, your, um, your collage, after you've saved your picture, after you've saved your movie, um, you can still do more with it. You can bring it all into, let's say, something like iMovie and make a whole you know, feature-length film or whatever uh, with it, or um, make a class uh, video with it, with, with everyone's videos together. So iMovie is a great way um, to do that. Um, cut, um, we, uh, I'm stumbling because... Uh, She's looking for yeah, a stop free... motion. Another, we do all these oh, different yeah. types of movies. We do a lot of stop motion in our district. Oh, we went too far. There we go. Sorry. Um, cute cut is the free. Uh, there's there's several different you know iMovie knockoffs. Um, cute cut uh, for uh, is free and um, it does a pretty good job of doing almost as good as iMovie. iMovie's 4.99. Again, if I only had 20 dollars, that would be one of the places I would spend my money. Uh, but cute cut, especially if you're just starting um, or or thinking of a project and you're not sure how much you're really going to use um, iMovie, then start with cute cut and see what your kids do. Um, I, I, we've got two. Um, uh, stop motion innovation uh, apps here, iMotion HD and OSnap. OSnap has a lot of extra bells and whistles. Um, iMotion HD is very, very simple. So if, if your kids are just starting with stop motion, it's a great place to start. Basically, um, the the tools are really, really simple, and you just hold up your iPad or you know put it on a tripod or whatever, and you're just hitting capture, 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 and they're moving things really slowly. We've had a lot of good success in our district with um, once kids are done with a unit, maybe it's a landform unit or whatever, um, or erosion, and having them show whatever it is that they've learned um, through stop motion. The kids really have to think through the process. And again, um, we do this all the way down to pre-K on, on up to 12. 12th grade. Um, with pre-K or, you know, a, a lower elementary, they might be just doing part of the water cycle. Their group is only doing evaporation. They're only showing evaporation. Um, and then we're putting those all together into one big uh, video. So, moving out of using your iPad for movie mode, um, we're going to talk about how to use it as a interactive whiteboard. So, there's a couple of apps. There's actually tons of apps, but the two that we're going to highlight are Edu Creations and Doodlecast. There is uh, Show Me. I mean, there's so many out there. These are just a few. The reason we chose these two are these two have the easiest ways to share out what they're doing with you or with their parents. Um, so they do the same thing. They're interactive like whiteboards. So we're going to open up Doodlecast and just show you what that looks like. So one way to use it would be as the teacher. Maybe we're going through um, two-digit edition and we've been talking about that in class and you're getting ready to go to centers or stations and work on this skill on your own. I can, and the whole group, do the lesson with you here. Holly opened it up, she's hitting record. We are going to um, add these two digits together, 12 plus 34, always start in the ones place, four plus two, 
is 6. And in the tens place, we have 3 plus 1, and that is 4. So we get 46. And that's about all the math I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and stop. So from there, we can, I can just put this iPad in the station, or we can email it out. Let's go ahead and play it. Bobby opened up, she's going to record. We are going to um, add these two digits together, 12 plus 34. All the we get it. <laughs> so it's my voice. It's the lesson that we just did, again, right in front of you for if you need those skills. You could have it emailed out. You can have it um, as a reminder in their homework, in your homework blast. Um, so that's you sharing and helping them with those skills that they need help with. On the flip side of that, you can have students use the same app and they do the work and they do the talking so that you see what's going on in their thinking. Um, this is completely, you're able to take a grade on this if you wanted to. Um, Educreations, Doodlecast is still kind of uh, up and coming. Educreations yeah. has a great site um, where they have a bunch of tutorials already that um, uh, students and teachers have uploaded. And um, Show Me, Show Me. Yeah, Show has, me has a, ton a lot of great ones um, as well. Oh, Macbeth. So in this example, um, this is just a screenshot, and they were working on Macbeth, and this is just a student that was walking through the different motives you see on there. I'm sure they were narrating with it, but this is just a screen, still a screenshot. Um, great. All right. Next project, become a thread head. A voice thread, think of voice thread as um, you're having a central image or it could be a video, and then um, your class is commenting on it. So it could be student work that they're commenting on. It could be an image or a video that you just want their feedback on or um, an image that you you know, should resonate with them, um, something that you've taught. Um, so here's an example. Um, these students did, uh, they, they were studying Japanese internment camps, and then they did a piece of artwork um, about uh, you know, reflecting what they knew, and they also wrote a letter as if they were a, as, um, a prisoner in the internment camp, and then um, each of the class members um, commented on it. And when you make your voice thread public, um, you're able to invite uh, other community members to comment as well. Um, now, of course, that does take some moderation, um, or it could take some moderation depending on your community. Um, and you can set, even though you've got it public, you can set your voice thread so that you, the teacher, have to approve everything that goes into it. Um, so you'll, you'll want to play with that a little bit. The free version allows you to create five threads for free or a free account, and then there's paid accounts on that. The nice thing here, too, is that it's not only stuck on the iPad, uh, voice thread is a, um, it's it's on the internet, so you can access it from any device, which is great. Makes it really easy to share um, with students and parents alike. Another way we use our iPads uh, very frequently is having the students to write and illustrate. They're creators of books. And so the first two that you see there, Outline and Drawing Pad. Outline is basically just a notebook on the iPad where they can all collaborate, collect their ideas. It's really like a binder. If you're familiar with OneNote, it reminds me a lot of OneNote. Drawing pad is just an example of a drawing app. Since they're going to be making books, um, you're going to want to have some sort of a way for them to draw their pictures. This one has a few more bells and whistles. There's plenty of free drawing, drawing apps out there that are free. Um, so Strip Designer and Comic Life, those are two app, apps that are um, comic strips. I mean, their names are kind of a giveaway. But um, the first one there would be just a solid uh, picture, just one page. Whereas the comic life let, lets you have a booklet. So we have an example of, I believe, the first one. And I think. Oh, we don't. Okay, so here's a drawing pad example. Just you can see on drawing pad, we have the different types of colors. There's all kinds of stuff paint brushes, um, stamps. This is actually Holly's daughter. Uh, her book is called The Green Bean Circus. And this is just one of the illustrations from her book. She uses this app to get her drawings. And this is one of the comic book. Creation. So this is using Strip Designer. They just grabbed a bunch of chunked up photos and they, you know, typed in those text bubbles. You can add as many text bubbles as you want. 
They have pre-made templates for you. There's tons of templates. Both of those apps have really great templates. And what they're doing here, they're, they're actually explaining. So ELA um, can geek out on all of this, but um, all the other subject areas, um, this is great across the curriculum. Because what they're um, doing uh, here is they're explaining um, how to do multiplication times nine. Um, I know it's kind of difficult The picture is kind of pixelated in the app. It shows up beautifully. Scribble Press is a great one for creating books. So you can see there's three different shelves. That middle, the shelf right there that says my books, so the books that you just tap the button there to start creating a new book. The books they've created will be there on the top shelf. In the middle, you have a new drawing, so they don't have to use a different app. They can use uh, their drawings straight from this app. And then the very bottom there is to browse whatever a collection of books that people have made with this app. I really like Scribble Press. Um, I, don't, I mean, I don't have more to elaborate on it, but it's just a really great one for creating books. Um, the two things I wanted to say are um, the cool thing about the, it, it used to be free. So we used to, that's one of the big reasons why we um, always promoted it, um, which was nice. Um, the downside is you do have to create an account, yeah, um, right. which is kind of a, uh, if you, you know, if you're going back and forth with a bunch of kids or whatever, it gets to be a hassle. Um, um, and then the other thing, though, if you do want to use it and get in with the account and everything, you can order, after your students make a book, you can order a print copy of the book. So that's highly, highly, highly motivational. We've even had um, classes do this where they set a price for their book, um, and they did a little, you know, economic study of how much the book should be, and then they were selling them and making money and, and uh, raising money for playground equipment. So that was really cool. Um, and again, it used to be free. I think it's $2.99 now. It's not too much. Not too bad. Um, so Little Story Maker is just another one of these apps that lets you make books. But what we love about this one is that it lets you narrate on top of your text um, and, and sync that together so that the kids can, you can choose for this book to be read to you and it, they hear your voice reading along with the words. If you um, are... One way to think about this is to have your students buddy up with an older class or the older class buddy up with the lower class or even Skype in to collaborate together, maybe working on a research project. I know for myself, I struggled when we were studying uh, presidents or things like that. I taught second grade. It was very difficult for me to find reading material that was appropriate for them. So if you have a year where you're uh, studying presidents and you can partner up with the older class, they can do the research together. They can build this book together. Um, the older ones can type it in and narrate on top. And then next year, you have a collection of research books for your kids made by your other kids on a level that's appropriate for them. And they eat that up. Anytime they're teaching a younger one or teaching you or whatever, they love that. You get really good results with that. Book Creator is definitely one of my favorites. Um, again, this is the beautiful artwork of one of Holly's kiddos and one of their great books, but Book Creator is a really fun one. We're going to walk through how you actually would use this app. You're just going to hit that little plus sign that she hit to get started. You can choose whatever type of layout you would like. And once it opens up from here, you can start tapping that very top uh, right hand plus sign and you can start adding your pictures. There was an option, there you go, camera roll. Yep. There's tons of life cycle stuff on there. Where'd it go? There you go. Um, we had what I did with the first grade class, we did lots of life cycle stuff. So here's just an example of grabbing pictures that were in my um, camera roll. And then now she's having the, she's typing on top of them. I will say what I did, what I did not find organic or what didn't come easily to me was how to change this. Like for example, the word life cycle. I want, or right now Holly is changing the color on the picture. So you can see what she did. You see the blue, uh, the blue is selected. If you tap on that and then you tap the I in the right hand corner, then it gives you your options for how you want to change things. So um, go ahead and click on the word life cycle and now click the I. Now I can change the font, I can change the size. For some reason that just did not come quickly to me, so I wanted to make sure I point that out for you. And then if she wants to... Um, that drives me crazy. I'm an English major, so it has so to be capitalized. So is the plus on it because the plus was on it? Um, not the plus, the place sign in my camera roll. Is that it's just a picture? I just want to talk about audio. Oh, yeah. So then she can hit the plus sign again and add sound down from the bottom. 
the life cycle. There you go. And it pops out on the page. She can move it wherever she wants to. If we wanted to add more pages to this book, you would just hit the next slide, next button and continue this process. So we've done this with grades as low as K. I'm sure pre-K could do it as well. I just haven't done it with grades that low. Um, very simple to use. So think of this as, um, I mean, there's tons of things that you could do with Book Creator. But I like the idea of um, having your students study something and then create a textbook. What would you put in the textbook? I mean, what should there be? And instead of a, you know, boring textbook or whatever, um, you can add video and add, um, you know, a reenactment or whatever. Um, so that's really fun and cool. And the way to share it out, the action button that you see up there, um, the way to share it out, these are all my options. If you, if you want to share it with your parents through email and they have iBooks on their devices, they can open it up as a book. If they don't have something like that, you can just email it to them as a PDF. And that's going to take out any audio that you have, and it's not going to let you flip the pages. But um, so those are the ways I would share it. So, so there it is. So now we have it open in iBooks. This and once iBooks. you have it in iBooks, the pages turn really nicely. And you can play the audio, real simple. The life cycle. Fish eggs. Lava. So you can see how powerful that could be. Yeah. So we have an example of uh, some fifth graders that used it. They, so what the teacher did was they broke into groups and they each were studying uh, famous explorers. So here's the books that they made in their groups. Now we want to point out that you want to set some parameters for your kiddos because I don't know about you, but this is very hard on my eyes. So you just want to lay down the law with them, let them know, you know, we want to make sure that this is something that you can read. Um, but that's all authentic learning. That's their artwork in the background. Those are their words explaining how they came to America, how they were exploring. And this was a kindergarten class. Z, G, G, Grasshopper. H, 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 Hippopotamus. And those... Um, Fancy graphics were just, if you're into digital scrapbooking, she found on sale a digital scrapbook of ABC flashcards, and that's how we pulled that into Book Creator. All right, Project 7, Witness and Report. Um, I've got Pocket BMX down here, but really you could use any game for this. So if your students have a game that they really, really love um, that isn't too violent, uh, and hopefully they're not <laughs> that kind of gamer, um, you can have them game. Um, so one of them is gaming, and then you might have a group of three or just another partner that's basically the eyewitness news reporter watching the game. They're the sports reporter. Um, and a great way, again, you don't have to have the reporting done on an iPad, but if you wanted to, Evernote is a great way um, to do that. What Evernote, again, Evernote, Sketch, and Penultimate all um, go into one account, basically. But you can add um, audio here. Right up at the top, there's a little microphone. Um, so you can record the audio as the um, student is playing Pocket BMX or whatever game you chose. Um, you can take pictures and add them um, to your report, and you're adding um, text as well. So it's a really great way to keep notes as um, the student is gaming. Um, now, you're going to want to, what, the reason that I chose Pocket BMX, well, really two reasons. One, it was free on the day that I found it. And two, it allowed for an instant replay. Um, especially when your kids are first doing a project like this, they're going to need the game to either move slow or have, um, you know, some way to watch the game again. Um, so just kind of be cognizant of that as you're choosing the game that you want them to um, write about. Um, students get really excited about this, too. Again, this kind of project should not not live just, you know, turned into the teacher. This should be, you know, if you have an announcement cart every day, this, you know, this should be on your school news. This should be, you know, posted on your teacher blog. This should be sent out to, um, you know, make the students make a newspaper or whatever. Um, so shared beyond just your classroom. Project eight, one of that I super, super love, building a talking museum. Um, we've been doing this for about, I guess, 
a year or so now. Um, so we have a, a bunch of this. So, so we've kind of gone through a, a metamorphosis, if you will, um, of the projects or the products, excuse me, fancy that we use. I'm going to start yeah. calling you fancy words. Holly. Fancy, fancy, fancy. It's a, it, that English minor is worth something. Yeah. My parents are getting their money's worth. Um, Crocket uh, is a great way. Where I'm going to show you several different apps, or um, two primarily, but three different ways um, to, to get audio um, and to take it um, in to your iPad and get a URL for it. Because once you get the URL for the audio, then you can turn that into QR. So what um, we've been having students do, one project that comes to mind, we had a group of fourth graders that went um, to San Antonio, were from Houston or that area. They um, drove on a bus to San Antonio, they visited a bunch of missions, and then they came back to school and they drew about it. Um, they, it was part of their art project and whatever. So they drew, 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 drew. And then um, in ELA, this, the teacher had them write about it as well. Um, well, they wanted to put you know, everything up on the bulletin board or whatever, or show everything out, um, but there was just not enough room. So what they did uh, was they posted the artwork, and then next to the artwork was a QR of each student reading what they had written about um, what they learned on the mission uh, field trip. Um, so Crocket will allow you to uh, record for about 30 seconds. Again, how much do you really want to listen to? Um, so Crocket is, is great, um, but Dropbox is a little bit easier. It will, it, it is, Crocket is free, so disclaimer, audio, uh, I'm sorry, Dropbox is $2.99, I believe. Um, it wasn't free when I bought it, but it's worth it. Um, and what it does is it uh, syncs with your Dropbox account, and it puts the audio right there into Dropbox so that you can get back to it again, which is definitely an advantage over Crocket and then another different way I'm going to show you in a minute if you are more PC or Mac-based. Um, so anyway, the kids record the audio, they get the URL, um, the teacher uses the URL, or the students do, to make their QRs, and those can be posted. The scanning app that we like, um, most of you probably already have one, but for, um, for free and um, what works really well in our district is an app called Scan. Um, there's no ads. You don't have to sign in. It works with YouTube. Um, we've we've um, tried several different apps this that, you know, they'll run into little easy. hiccups. So this one just across Smooth. the board um, works very smoothly. It's worked great for our kids. So this project here, and you can actually scan this code. Um, this was, the student did a, um, they took a member of their family, an immigrant preferably, because they were studying family um, family ties and things like that, um, and, and then where that person came from. So they interviewed different um, family members and uh, came up with a, um, a one family member that they were that was deceased, an ancestor that they did a little report on, and then they kind of dressed up this doll in, uh, you know, whatever their na native garb would be, <laughs> or what they thought their native garb would be. So, I'll give you a minute to scan that if you like. We can come back to it if you need it. Um, and then if you're not primarily on an um, iPad, QR, uh, to make the QR in and of itself, um, I prefer, you, you, there are apps that you can use um, to make a QR code on your iPad. But we don't have printers that are hooked up to our iPads. They don't work on the same network. They just don't work well together in our district. Maybe yours do. Um, so I make my QRs um, using a site called qrstuff.com. Um, there's a bunch of other different ways you can make them, but that one works um, really, really well. Another site that we like to use with this project as well is recordmp3.org. Um, and that is basically you just plug a, a microphone into any computer, and you're able to record uh, for up to two minutes, I believe and then it gives you a URL when you're, when you're done. Please note, there's no sign-in um, or anything like that, which is great. Your kids can use it over and over and over and over and over, no problem. Um, but if you ever want them you know, to pull up that URL again, because there's no account associated with anything, there's no way to do that. So it's just they would have to record um, again. And then again, we've got our scan app there. All right. Project 9, connect to your community. Is this me too? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, um, connecting to your community. Um, like I said at the beginning, it's so, so important that we broaden our students' horizons outside of our classroom. The work that they're doing should not just be turned into the teacher and um, that's it, or and, you know, and it comes back and it goes in the garbage. That's not a cycle that, um, that students are excited about, for connecting sure. Connecting to the community is just making it real world. It makes it authentic. It's things that they're going to walk away with and remember 10 years from now. I'll remember when we did that in Mr. Yak's class. We connected with right. FaceTime. Yeah. So FaceTime is on every device unless you have an older device or a device without a camera. Um, and basically, I, I want you to think um, even little, you know, jobs or uh, that that are in the community, like not little. like the, um, the the we have the fire study, the unit on right. fire, and so we had a teacher who connected to one of our um, firemen, local firemen. He had the app, you know, FaceTime on his phone, and they did a, you know, we are, you know, our budget is, is has shrunk so much that they can't go to the firehouse and tour it. So they got to do a field trip, a virtual field trip through FaceTime with him, and they toured the fire station, and he talked about, you know, fire safety and they learned all about that stuff through FaceTime. Right, so what I was getting at, I guess, was that it doesn't have to be this big elaborate project. It can be something as simple as connecting to, you know, a parent um, who has an interesting job or, you know, someone who's going somewhere. Um, we even have teachers who, when they're um, at, out for, you know, maternity leave or whatever, um, they'll FaceTime in and We and don't talk call to HR and tell them that they're yes, doing that. Yes, we don't tell HR that they did that, but <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> um, and then Skype. Skype for Education is a wonderful community of education educators who are doing things across the world. If you're not um, a member, um, you should be. And uh, you can check out, and all the time people are posting, you know, I'm in Rio de Janeiro and I need a class who's, you know, looking at the economics of um, South Texas or whatever. That happens constantly. Um, they, they just did a big thing with a um, hiker who was climbing Mount Everest. So connecting to him, that's really, really an awesome thing for our students to be able to do with zero budget. You know, it's, it's awesome. Um, Digital Wish and Sign Up Genius are just two ways to help manage, you, uh, manage um, the community involvement. Digital Wish actually has a link um, that you can click on, um, and it basically you put your wish out there. I need a volunteer who, you know, knows about fracking oil or whatever. And sure enough, somebody from Shell will, will you know, message you back. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then Sign Up Genius um, is if you're managing a whole list uh, or a whole group of um, things that are happening all at once, whether you're bringing, um, you know, the, whether they're bringing things in and they're actually coming in to your classroom or you're managing time in some other way. Two really great sites. And finally, it's important to get social, which has been the message pretty much this whole time. Edmodo is a wonderful way for you to be interacting with students um, socially in a very secure um, environment. If you're not in Edmodo, do yourself a favor, check out Edmodo um, this week. If you need to talk to either of us, we're, we've been doing Edmodo for, or our students have been in Edmodo for about three years um, now. So we're pretty well versed in that. Um, Twitter, we've got a lot of great um, teachers that are on Twitter. And I have a feeling since ISTE is trending on Twitter that you guys are on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, one of our teachers who's doing just an awesome job is Emily Rocha. Is that how you say yeah, her name? Emily yeah. Rocha. She's yeah. a first grade teacher. Um, she does not post last names, but she just does quick little posts about what's going on in their classroom. And uh, we actually, uh, one of our coworkers is a parent. One of his students, um, his daughter is in her class, or was last year, and he loves it. He feels so connected with them. He feels like he really knows what's going on in her class. And when he asks her what's going on and she says, nothing, <laughs> then, uh, you know, he can say, well, what about this? And so... Yeah, um, and in our district, you're going to want to, you know, be familiar with your policies on taking video and taking pictures of students. But our right. our district has an opt out policy, so we're um, our district is very much into, you know, encouraging our teachers to use Facebook and Twitter to connect um, where the parents are at. And then Blogger, we have lots of teachers who have. Um, whoops. Did the wrong thing. They're using blogs to share out um, with their with their parents. Right, and again, it's the idea that when the student goes home, um, that the parents can ask them about um, their day, and. More than that, um, they're sharing with a, a worldwide, a global community of learners, and that's exciting for any child to be a part of. So we thank you for your time, and if you have questions or anything, we'd be happy to help you.